What we'll do is leave one end of that graft attached. We go to the other end and we cut it loose. Cut it loose with a scalpel blade. Now, a graft has to be dermis and epidermis only. You don't want any subcutaneous tissue on any graft. And the strip grafts are no exception. So we need to get the subcutaneous tissue off of this graft. If you have subcutaneous tissue on that, it impairs the ingrowth of blood vessels into the dermis of that graft. Now the easiest way to get that off is to leave it attached at one end, take some thumb forceps, grasp that graft, pull it up, and you're cutting it loose here. Now we don't have the subcutaneous tissue off of that yet, but what we'll do is put some stretch on that graft and then we can go down the back side of it with our scissors as we're doing here and remove that, that uh, subcutaneous tissue. And that's important uh, for getting this graft to heal. Now it's much easier to do it this way, to cut that graft or that subcutaneous tissue off of that graft doing it this way than to cut that thing loose and lay it out on your surgery table and chase it around like you were trying to spay an earthworm to get the fat off the back of that graft. All right, we have the subcutaneous tissue removed from this graft, so we're ready to harvest it and place it into our groove, one of the grooves that we've made. We'll come back here and we will cut that free. And there's our graft. That's our first strip graft. We'll take that graft now and take it up to our area where we're gonna place it in a groove. We'll find that groove that we've created and we'll place that graft down in that groove as we have uh, shown here. At this point, we can take some suture material. Generally, I'll use some three-aught suture material on a cutting needle, a reverse cutting needle. This is usually non-absorbable uh, monofilament, either proline or nylon. To anchor that uh, graft in the uh, groove, we're gonna take a bite in the uh, area here, and we're gonna take a bite in, the, in that uh, graft. And that will be our anchoring suture for this graft. Okay, let's cut that. If we had granulation tissue grooves, this would lay down in that groove very nicely. Now we can see here that we've uh, made that graft a little longer than what uh, we needed for that groove, so we'll go ahead and cut it to the length that we need. Another anchoring suture then is placed at the other end of that graft to anchor it at the other end. Again, using that same suture material, come through the graft and then through the tissue at the end of that, uh, that wound to anchor this uh, in place. All right, we've got our first graft placed in the first, in the first groove that we made. Now, if you feel it's necessary to place other sutures along the side of that graft, you can do so, but you have to do it carefully, and uh, you don't have to do it in a lot of places. Say if that uh, wound ran over a joint or was uh, in an area where you felt it needed some immobilization, you could take a bite in the edge of your granulation tissue. Be very careful because granulation tissue is very uh, friable and will tear easily. So it has to be placed very easily. Pull your needle clear through that and then come back and go through the edge of your graft for anchoring that in place. Now when you tie that suture, again, remember that granulation tissue is very friable and will tear easily. So you don't want to put a lot of tension on that suture as you're, as you're anchoring this in place. It's just an immobilization type of uh, situation that we're uh, working with. Okay. So we have our first graft placed. We'll go ahead and repeat that procedure on the other grafts to get them placed in their uh, areas. We've now completed our strip grafting technique. We see our strip grafts in the grooves. We have anchored it at either end, one suture at either end of the grafts. The grafts are down in the grooves, and we've, uh, we're ready to bandage this. But before we bandage, we want to go back and close our donor area. If we look at the donor area, it's basically a rectangle in shape. 
Closing a wound like this on the trunk of a dog closes very nicely if you close it centripetally. In other words, we'll place a suture at this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner, and just continue going around that wound, closing in a centripetal fashion. It will end up as a double Y-shaped scar, both of these ends coming together and then a long stem between the two Ys in here. So that's the way we'll close that. We're proceeding with our closure of the donor site and we're closing centripetally starting at one corner and just suture around that wound and keep suturing until these two ends come together and then we'll suture this as one long stem between the two uh, V's making a double Y shaped scar. We've completed our closure of the donor site as you can see here it's a double Y shaped scar with uh, the two uh, bases of the Y at either end of that and then we have the double stem in the center there. So it makes a nice closure for uh, the donor area when you have a rectangular shaped donor area. We're ready to start talking about bandaging now. How do you bandage these grafts? The thing that you're going to do with bandaging is uh, place over the, the graft site a semi-permeable non-adherent uh, bandage material such as a telfa pad. And you're going to put some antibi antibiotic on that. It's in the form of a 0.1% genomycin sulfate ointment. Put a very thin coating of this, almost imperceptible. This is placed over the graft donors, over the, over the grafts. This is followed by a secondary wrap of an absorbent uh, secondary material. And then your tertiary layer is a, either white adhesive tape or you can use uh, the elastic tapes. If it's over a joint, then you want to put a splint in that bandage uh, to prevent bending of that joint while these grafts heal in place. Now as far as graft uh, changing the bandage on these grafts, changing that bandage is done probably every other day or maybe every day. The bandage changing will become less frequent as the wound heals and there's less drainage from this wound. So we'll have uh, less drainage from this wound as this thing heals in place. Generally they're healed in place by about 21 days. Sutures would come out of your uh, donor area at about 7 to 10 days. Now the graft healing. How does the graft heal? These grafts have an advantage in their healing because these grafts set down in a groove. So blood vessels can grow into the dermis of that graft not only from the bottom of that groove but from the sides of the groove. So we have that advantage for getting a blood supply to these grafts. In addition, the granulation tissue has myofibroblasts in it. Myofibroblasts are fibroblasts that take the characteristics of smooth muscle. They will attach to the sides of that graft and they will contract, thus widening the graft out, giving us a more cosmetic appearance. And then the third thing that happens is we will have epithelial tissue that will grow from the strip grafts, grow out to cover the intervening granulation tissue. So that's generally how these grafts will heal in place. As far as the cosmetics on these grafts, we did a study and we found that they may not be as cosmetic as say a mesh graft or a flap uh, when you uh, reconstruct with those two type of procedures. There may not be as much hair growth on your strip grafts as uh, you would get with those other two procedures.